What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today, yes, we are working on the truck again. Now, what is the issue? So, if you guys caught the video where I put new brakes on this thing, I bought a power stop brake kit, uh, used the factory calipers, but I did replace the rotors and the pads. Now, uh, apparently a common issue in these things are these single piston calipers in the back cause issues and if you guys also notice I made a separate video where I replaced the brake line on the side thinking that could be my issue well the downside is it's not my issue guys this caliper uh, I think both of my rear calipers are shot and uh, apparently like I said this is a common problem on the single piston calipers because they I don't know whether it's one of one parts made of steel and the other one's aluminum and they catch over time and uh, my dad had the same issue on his truck and I don't know why it just decided to start doing this when I changed the brakes, but it did. So I haven't really been driving this thing because the brakes in the rear are locking up and when I get back from a drive, they're like glowing hot. So we're obviously gonna have to replace that. The downside is I spent all that time painting those green and that paint wasn't cheap. It was from G2 Caliper Paints and I'll list it down in the description below. While they do look really nice, it just sucks that I had to repaint the replacement set. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna actually upgrade. We're gonna go to the dual piston in the rear, which, it, the, like I said, the downside is I've already done this, but it does require a new um, brake rotor and it does require new calipers. So I'm gonna be replacing all of that as well as the brake pads. And uh, these don't even have probably 10 miles on them. So it just really sucks. And sorry guys, there's a train and a bunch of wind today, but it's a decent day and I think this is a good time to work on this thing. I really want to start driving it more and until I get the brakes fixed, obviously that's not going to happen. So let's get this thing off the ground. I already got the front wheels chalked up. Uh, let's get this thing off the ground, get the wheels off and see what's involved in swapping to a rear dual piston caliper. Now there is also an upgrade on the front and I wish I had done a little more research before I just bought these brakes and put them on because apparently in 06 and 07 they went to a bigger front brake and I would have probably done that whole deal at one time but uh, I'll list all these parts down below because obviously you're going to need to know the parts if you want to go to a dual piston rear and um, so like I said I'll list those down below but let's get this thing off the ground get the wheels off and start this project. Now that we have the wheels off on both sides, uh, this is a pretty simple process, guys. So the cool thing is the brake line actually fits both the single and the dual piston caliper. So no replacement there. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to loosen this a little bit with an 11 millimeter. And the reason I'm going to do that is it's a real pain to get loose when you are um, not hooked to the car. So I'm just going to loosen it like that. I want to save as much brake fluid as possible. So I'm going to leave this all hooked up. So I know it may drip a little bit. Now that, we're, now that we've got that done, I'm gonna take this all off as one unit. So there's two 18 millimeters back here in the back. I'm gonna go ahead, take those out, and we'll get this out of the way, and we'll be able to slide the old rotor off. Sometimes these are pretty tight, and I like to use a rubber mallet to uh, get them started. So I'll tap the rubber mallet on the end of my ratchet. Unless, sometimes it's hard to get a breakover bar in here when you're uh, kind of cramped on space when they're slammed. Once we get them loose though, we can switch over to like a ratcheting wrench and uh, that makes things a lot, a lot easier. We are going to be reusing these, so make sure you don't lose them. It is leaking a little bit of brake fluid right now. I didn't loosen that very much, but it's enough to make it leak. And you, 
can see they are tight tight so I may end up going ahead and releasing the brake caliper itself uh, so these are just 12 millimeters I believe either 11 or 12 millimeters we'll go ahead and take these out uh, on the caliper because I have a feeling they're just locked they're pretty locked in place so we're gonna have to do that in order to get it out of the way and it is a 12 millimeter to get these out um, the brake line kind of interferes with it a little bit but we'll get both these out and then hopefully we can get the caliper out of the way I thought for sure it'd slide right off but if it's locked up maybe not guys it is frozen on there I'm gonna have to go get my pry bar to pry it loose a little bit so I got my pry bar and that looks like what what we needed to do it I was like trying not to scratch it but then I realized well these are junk so it doesn't really matter if they're scratched at this point so now we got that out of the way. Brake pads are brand new, guys. So, hey, if any of you guys need this stuff, it's literally just gonna set in my garage. So hit me up in the comments and let me know if you want these brake pads or these rotors. Um, if you guys just pay the shipping, I will send them to you because I have no use for them and they will literally just set around. Now that we got this off though, can go ahead and get our rotor out of place. And I'm gonna go grab the new rotor that goes here and uh, we'll put it into place first. And then I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the bracket in and the caliper on, and then we'll worry about getting the brake line moved over. So I got the new rotor here and I do like to wipe them down with some brake clean Sometimes they ship with some goo on them. So it's always a good idea to wipe them down on both sides. Once we do that though, should be able to put this thing in place. Not a whole lot of difference guys between the two. Um, this one is a little bit bigger. I'll show you here. And it's a lot thicker so you can see look at how thin this is here and how much thicker it is here so uh, that's the reason we have to change these out the other ones obviously won't work so i'm hoping my backing plates are fine they seem to not be rubbing so i think we're good there but let's grab that new caliper bracket and at least get it into place so i am going to put a little bit of loctite on this not a ton just some blue loctite's what i'm using you can see that the factory has that yellow Loctite on there, so put a little bit of Loctite on there before we go back together with the new bracket. Looks like I'm running out of Loctite. Now I did go ahead and put the hardware into the new bracket itself so it is ready to go back on Hopefully you guys can tell I got a little bit better paint job on these because they weren't on the truck. I actually painted them in my kitchen. My wife wasn't too happy about that, but I did it anyway. Snug these down.
and these are brand new calipers. I didn't want to buy remands, and I didn't want to have a core charge, so I just bought brand new. Now we can grab some caliper grease. I'm going to go ahead and grease these slide points on both sides, and I'll grab the pads and we'll stick them into place. Now I am going to use the grease that they sent me. I have my own, but might as well use this because I don't have any other use for it. I like to use a Q-tip to get it in here so I'm not getting it on everything. You want it anywhere these things slide. So once we get it, I'll put some in the back. I can't do that with the camera where it's at. We'll go ahead and we'll put some on the back of the pads themselves. And actually, I can go ahead and do that. We'll slide this front one in. Almost got it on the front there. just in the spots the pistons are going to hit. And then we can go ahead and slide this brake pad in. Now sometimes guys you got to move stuff around to get these things in correctly. Uh, just take your time. Obviously this goes in the bottom channel here. It's kind of a pain. Sometimes you got to get it on the inside. And that actually went in really easy. I feel like the other ones were a little worse than that. So I'll get the other ones in and then we'll go grab the new caliper and uh, slide it up into place. So I actually moved that one to the back because I put it in the exact wrong spot for our caliper to go on. I'm gonna put a little bit here too. We'll get this one into place. I just wanted to show you guys that even sometimes I screw up. I could have left it there, but it had just been a mess. So I'm going to put it in the areas where it's going to be touching once we see where the caliper is going to go into place. There's a big open window there, so I literally put it on the open windows and that's where the pistons are on the back. So didn't want all that goop showing through. Now you can see what I'm talking about. So in that area I put it, I moved that to the back, but I'm going to put some right in the middle and then on the outer sides here. Um, So it's not all gross. I think I'm about out here. On this, I think I'm just going to use my finger because that thing's soaking up more than I thought it would. Now we can slide that caliper into place and get this crap off my fingers. It's good to have a towel handy, guys. Not too bad. Let's thread our new bolts in. It does come with new ones. I think the other ones are the same size, but Use the new ones. Came with them, might as well use them. Once we get these snug down, I'll come back and let you guys know what we're going to torque all this stuff to, and then we'll worry about getting our actual brake line into place off that old caliper up there. So for torquing these things down, the 18s, the big ones that go into the caliper bracket, those are 148 foot-pounds. And these little guys, like your slide pins, they are 28. Now I read a couple places where different brakes went up to 80 on the slide pins and 210 on the bolts, but um, this is the smaller version. I think they're talking more of a three-quarter ton or a one-ton truck. So. 
they have quite a bit bigger assembly in the back. So 28 on these and the big caliper bracket mounting bolts, 148. Last thing we need to do is I've got my two new banjo washers here and we're gonna loosen this up and transfer it as quickly as possible. Now I'm trying to keep it away from my newly painted caliper. And it's gonna leak. Not much you can do about that, guys. One of the washers just went ahead and fell off, which is great. And there's the other one. I'll grab one, one on the front side, one on the back side. We'll try to get this thing back into place here as quickly as possible. It's really cool that this takes the exact same as the other one. Because if you had to change brake lines, this would be just a little bit more of a swap. thing is long-winded. Now I'm going to wipe off all the extra. And I'll probably use a little bit of brake cleaner. Wipe this down a little bit more. But now all we have to do is I'll go ahead and do the other side. I won't show you guys that exact same process. And then I'll see if I can get my son out here and we can bleed these things. So at this point we're bleeding them. I already bled the one furthest from the master cylinder. So the passenger side. And uh, I don't think I probably need to show you guys the bleeding process. If you watched the last video, it's the exact same. You want to try to start with the one furthest away from the master cylinder and work your way forward. Now I'm only going to bleed the back. So um, once we get these things bled, then I will go ahead and get the wheels back on and we will go test it on the road. Last thing we need to do once we get the wheels on is guys torque these things down. Doesn't take but just a minute. Definitely worth it. Now we'll get our center caps back on and we'll go test these things. Now that we're finished up guys, everything's back on, everything's torqued down, let's go down the road and test this thing out and get out of the wind. This poor truck needs to be driven. See, it hadn't been driven in so long, it needs an oil change, and I just changed it. So the break-in period on these brakes, now I've already done it on the front, but we've got to do it on the back. and. Uh, 45 or sorry 40 to 10 five times in a row and that's a pretty aggressive stop and then you follow that up with a 35 to 5 and that's a moderately aggressive stop and uh, then you need to drive for about five minutes to let the brakes cool down before you touch them so uh, that's kind of tricky but we're gonna do it we can take off now And I'm hoping these brakes don't drag. See if we can get up to 40 here. 
It's a poor six cylinder. I know everybody thinks it needs a V8. It probably does. Alright, there's 40. And we're going to go down to 10. And we're going to do that five times in a row. Hopefully I can get that done before we get to the end of our road here. Down to ten. There's three of them. I know on my wife's Cadillac I was able to get four of them before this curve up here. just as fast as the Cadillac. <laughs> One more of the 40 to 10, and then we'll move on to the 35 to 5. I can't tell you guys if it feels any different. It's been so long since I've driven it. Mainly, I'm concerned about the rear brakes staying locked up like they were doing before, so... So there's 35, all the way down to 5. You don't want to completely stop, so your speedometer will kind of drag behind. You just kind of got to guess where 5 is. And that's my console rattling, guys. It's not... my dash. Two more of these and we will be set. Kind of got to take that turn a little faster than I wanted to. drive around for five minutes trying not to touch the brakes so what you'll do is just kind of roll up to a stop sign if you have any the best way to do this obviously is out in the middle of nowhere or you can manually shift your vehicle down into first gear that's what I did in my wife's Cadillac of course it has paddles on the shifter or paddles on the back of the steering wheel So now we'll drive for five minutes and then once we get back to the house, I'll let you guys know how it went. So guys, we are back and it did perfect. Uh, no locking up, no issues whatsoever. So obviously the old calipers were my problem. These look better anyway because they kind of match the front and the fact that they're both dual piston now. Now, like I said, I wish I kind of would have waited and done the bigger brake in the front, but Honestly, guys, this thing doesn't need a ton of braking power anyway. These things, uh, there's a lot of guys going really fast in these trucks with the stock brakes. So chances are, you know, it didn't even need this. I could have just replaced it with a single piston. But I thought while we're doing it, we might as well upgrade. Now, granted, I could have cheap went a cheaper route with the single piston and not had to replace the rotor. But I just wanted to upgrade while I was doing it. I don't know why I'm like that, but I am. And... Like I said, there's known issues with that single piston caliper. So I didn't want to buy another one, get it all painted and have the same exact problem. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like I said, if any of you guys need this, let me know if you pay for the shipping, I will ship it to you. You're getting it all the old calipers with the brake pads in them and the rear brake rotors. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you thought this video was informative. I know a lot of people have done this rear disc uh, conversion, the dual piston caliper conversion and several people said that you would need a master cylinder you do not at all need a new master cylinder uh, that master cylinder is stout enough to run the back brakes so uh, no issues whatsoever with fading it was braking just fine uh, i know a lot of people also do these stainless brake lines but 
Um, while the stainless brake lines seem to be good in the back, the front ones don't mount to the factory location, so they send you like a rubber mounting tab, and I just don't like that. I think it, uh, you have to reroute it in different spots, and I just don't think it looks nice nor does it bolt in a place where I like it. So honestly, guys, I went back and forth on that while I was doing this. I was going to do the stainless brake lines, but decided ultimately to leave the rubber. And to be quite honest with you, like I said, this six-cylinder truck doesn't really need it. But if you did enjoy it, guys, please, like always, smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, you got to subscribe because we're going to do tons of stuff. Um, we got projects out the wazoo. I can't, I can't even fathom how many projects we have. If I stopped right now, I'd probably have enough projects for the next... 10 years if i had to guess anyway guys if you're not subscribed go down and smash that subscribe button make sure you ring that bell icon while you're down there and uh well stay tuned to see what we work on fix or sell next mm -hmm.